Okay, Jeremy, um, thank you so much for being part of our Digital Chameleons Accelerate program. Um, perhaps first of all you could tell us a little bit about yourself um, and sure. also about you know, what you do and what Industricom actually does. Sure. Um, uh, thanks for having me as well, Deborah. It's, uh, yeah, it's obviously always a pleasure to talk about the business. Um, I started Industricom in about 1998, and um, I guess I was utilizing the experience that I had uh, in the industrial sector, that's where I came from before, um, from a family business of steel, selling steel and industrial products. So I always had quite an interest in that area, and when I started getting interested in the internet, I started to um, uh, I started to think, well, how can I use the experience that I've had in the industrial sector? So I, we started the business actually as, as a website development company, and I was focusing on industrial companies. I was actually um, providing websites to industrial companies, and that was way back, as I said, in 1998, and there was, um, it was sort of the start of when people were, companies were starting to get online and stuff like that. Uh, and so I did that for about a year or a year or so, a year and a half, and um, basically the company sort of evolved and I sort of saw you know, lots of people stop, you know, doing website development, yet you know, overseas these online directories and portals were sort of opening up, so I started looking into that and um, basically got the idea for Industry Search uh, being an online directory and news and information site, uh, and to focus it on the manufacturing sector, which is an area that I knew quite a lot about. So. Um, and also came to understand it was a very big B2B media category as well, so it was quite an exciting space to start in. So, um, yeah, essentially launched industry research back then in about 1999 or so, mm -hmm. and um, you know worked hard and growing the business. And uh, you know it was sluggish to start off with, but you know started getting some momentum and started growing. Um, and then some ideas for other for another site came about. Uh, we started then medical search. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was in about 2005 or so, and that was a, that's another very substantial business-to-business -business publishing uh, vertical. So, uh, an area we decided to sort of uh, utilize our experience in publishing and, and, and start to um, you know start to focus on that area as well. So, medical search came about, and um, that's also grown grown quite well now. In fact, we've just launched our third site, um, it's called Hospitality Hub, so another, another big B, B2B publishing vertical. Mm -hmm. So I guess what you can see is we're a, bit of, we're a business to business publishing company focused online, so we've got our three sites now, Industry Search, Medical Search and Hospitality Hub. And um, yeah, basically that's that's what we focus on, mm -hmm. um, creating marketplaces in those three verticals at the moment, and we've got some ideas potentially for some more verticals later on. And we'll, so we'll, um, continue to grow the three sites you know, and, and focus on those areas and create content, um, build audiences and, and build advertisers in order to aggregate those areas. So obviously content you know, has been a, as a part of your, your business, how yeah. important do you see it you know, in your business? Uh, content obviously for us is hugely important, you know, as, as you know in the media industry they say content is king, so it's, um, it's, it's hugely important in order to grow an audience. You need to give your audience something to do on your website um, and give them a reason to come back to your site. So content for us is, is critically important and we've probably realized that more so in the last couple of years than when we started, um, even though it's always been important for us. So, you know, we're constantly developing good quality content in order to bring people to our websites in order to also build the credibility of our sites as well so that we can be seen as a you know a resource for our, for the industries that we focus on and um, and uh, our, our, our two main brands that are well established are already known quite well as very good content resources for their for those sectors so, so how, how did you go about um, building content around what are very quite niche mm -hmm. areas like manufacturing yeah. or um, industrial products sure um, what we do essentially is we um, we actually have a content budget per per vertical, even within our industry search site, there's about uh, 12 to 15 different verticals within that site. Things like automation, construction, um, food processing, and we actually assign a budget to each vertical, and then we um, get we actually assign our projects to uh, a database of uh, contributing editors and writers that we have, and um, yeah, basically collect, collect those, those feature articles typically, um, and Talking about video, do you um, intend, you know, to add to the kind of content types that you or, or offerings that you can you can give to your clients? You know, say webinars or yeah, you know, or graphics or you know, that, that kind of thing. Look, I think we will always explore what what areas are, are popular and what what areas are relevant to our marketplaces. Um, 
it's obviously being B2B, there's a slightly different dynamic than B2C websites, so we just need to assess what's, what's relevant to us and we then typically will go and you know, find the right things and implement them into our website if we think that it's, um, think that it's useful to our advertisers. And, and we, I guess we did that for video content, so that's become a big part of our site now and we're focusing more and more on that. So, yeah, I think we will always look for the right types of things to implement on there. I think it's always can be you know a challenge to cre keep creating content, especially engaging content. Mm. Um, what are the challenges that you find within your business to sort of continually do sure. that process? Yeah. Look, I think uh, earlier on in the business it was challenging to get that constant flow of content. Um, I think that probably was some in some ways attributed to resources and budgets, but also just having access to a group of writers and. Uh, you know, being able to encourage those writers to, to write for us as well. Uh, but I think as the business has grown, our resources increased, um, we do start to get a lot of good quality content on there. And I think it's a bit of a momentum thing when you do focus on it, you start to get more and more, as I said, momentum and you start to get more good, con good content on there. I think uh, also our advertisers, you know, because our database of advertisers has grown a lot as well, and we're also educating them on how to write good content. Um, you know, we, we benefit from that because that content feeds through our websites. Mm. Do you think it's harder to write content for niche audiences or is it easier I, to provide content? I think it's maybe a little bit easier because you kind of know exactly who who your audience is um, so you can actually go deep into that specific subject matter as opposed to you know, maybe consumer sites that have such broad, you know, people of such broad interests. Um, so, you know, I guess we, we know more about B2B content so we you know, we're quite comfortable with how to how to do that. So I think you know, I think it's a bit, a bit easier to 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 um, define what type of content they need. You spoke earlier about you know what you're trying to deliver to the advertisers. Yeah. Um, could you speak a little bit more about that? About how you use content to actually push people to the ultimate, hopefully a contact or, or a purchase. Sure. So we've got a couple of features on our website. So as I said, we publish the, the four types of content we publish on our website. And these are quite common types of content that you'll find on most even company websites. It's the type of information that companies need to get out there. It's things, as I said, news articles, uh, you know, what's happening in the company, feature articles, which are typically a bit more in-depth about a particular subject, um, product reviews, which are specifically about a product, um, case studies as well, which actually fits under feature articles for us, and um, event information. So. Those are the four types of content you can put on our site, and we actually push those out in a variety of ways. Um, one of the main things that we have is something called the Newswire, which uh, is personalised, which our subscribers can actually personalise to their interests, and we then push our information out to, to those subscribers, so it's an opt-in newsletter. And on industry search, we've got about 50,000 subscribers every day who receive that at the moment. On medical search, we've got about 25,000, and on hospitality hub, I think we've got about 4,000 at the moment, which is a fairly new site. Um, so the news why is obviously by email is one of the most important ways we get our content out. Uh, another feature that we have is something called the follow feature which is a, bit, a little bit like social media on um, you know, sites like LinkedIn or Facebook mm -hmm. yeah. where you can choose to follow a company so on our sites you can actually follow storefront, storefronts and then you'll get a monthly bulletin summarizing all the new content in those storefronts that you're following. So that's another. That's, a, that's about only a year old on our website, but that's growing in popularity and it adds more stickiness to our website and gets people coming back all the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that's another important feature. And uh, look, outside of that, just people who browse our websites, obviously the content we aim to display in as in as open and effective way as possible, so that people can find what they're looking for. You know, I think you know any media business is almost is creating a community, whether it's a, a print-based uh, publication or a trade show. You're creating a community around you know, around your content, around your publication, and I think the web is no different. And I think so. We really embrace that because we we know that we you know, we we also have the ability to use technology. We have a very good in-house development team who can assess what's happening on social media sites and apply some of those things to our website in order to in order to make them effective. But you know, obviously, as I said before, we're looking for the things that are most relevant to our business. So. There's a lot we can do, but we've got to actually differentiate uh, or assess what what we should do and, and apply those things. So some of the things we've done, as I said, is the, uh, the follow feature that we have, but also comments. Um, 
we uh, our comments have gone up significantly in the last six months or so, um, which is very exciting. Um, you know, and that's done by the fact that our audiences are growing, and that our the quality of our content is, is improving as well. We also, also interesting. We we did a very small change in, in our user interface of our website, where we moved the comments box it was on the right hand side, and we moved it to below the, to the articles, and our comments shot up by 500 percent, something like that. It was quite amazing, actually. So. Um, I've actually made our content director, he was a bit of a skeptic on creating communities and interaction in, in our B2B space and uh, I'm quite happy that I've actually come, I've actually changed his thinking now and he's getting quite as excited as I am about actually creating interaction and getting content, yeah. uh, getting people to interact with content and place comments and so definitely that's something for the future and we're, we're going to develop on those ideas more and more. Obviously you're very forward thinking um, about content but not everybody is in the mm. B2B space. Yeah. Um, how do you convince um, somebody else in that space that using content marketing and, and content itself yeah. um, is actually, you know, the key rather than something, you sure. know, an added thing that they don't really want to invest in. That's fair enough. Look, definitely with, with many of the small businesses that we're talking to, uh, to encourage them to, to work with us and, and have a storefront, it is an education process and, you know, a lot of them are very sceptical. So, you know, I guess we, we're the credibility of our sites has improved, so we're, you know, they're seeing companies that they know that are on there doing well, they're seeing them put a lot of content on there, um, and they're also, I guess they're having some, some confidence in the fact that they can track and measure everything as well. Mm. Um, and I think companies are definitely realizing that the high cost of traditional brand ads and things like that are not, you know, are not exactly what they need in order to succeed. You know, they want direct response, they want inquiries generated, mm. they want to know how many people phone them or you know, how many inquiries they receive through a particular medium. So I think once we start to talk about our product and, and what it does and the fact that they can put their content out via news wires, they can also um, develop and grow followers to their own storefronts, um, all that sort of thing and tracking and measurements and all you know, so I think once we start to talk about those things, a lot of the smaller companies are realizing that it is definitely something worthwhile trying. You know, it's a, a low annual cost in our, in our, in our initial packages. So, um, yeah, it's something that they're trying more and more. And we're, uh, you, know, you know, our team are talking their language, and, and all, you know, we also have a very supportive content team who are working very closely with each and every advertiser to make sure that they get all the right quality content on there, and that they're actually utilising their storefront as best possible. So. And at the end of the day, the results speak for themselves. And you know, I guess uh, we've got an over 75% renewal rate for our, mm -hmm. our advertiser, our storefront advertisers. So that's definitely, at the end of the day, the thing that speaks most mm -hmm. to potential customers and, and you know, the fact that the companies are coming back. And um, so it's, you know, it is effective, and it's just a matter of convincing those companies who are skeptics, which mm -hmm. is always going to be a challenge. And you, you say you have a content team. Yeah. Is that made of journalists, or is that, is that mainly? It's, a, it's uh, in house is mainly editors with some 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 junior journalists. Um, now most of our contributing writers are actually actually external to the company. They just you know we, we hand them assignments every month based on what our budgets are. Um, but the, the the internal content team are growing. They all have editorial uh, educational backgrounds and they are all growing their editorial um, experience as well. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a combination. It's not, we're not like a search engine where you exactly looking what you, you know what you're looking for and you find it and you, you yeah. come to it. We're actually encouraging people to browse and click and read things and actually discover information. It's not just about searching and finding, it's about discovering and learning as well. So, um, But we also do optimize our content for search engines, so there's another mm -hmm. way people get through our website. We're yeah. constantly looking at all the latest optimization techniques. Mm -hmm. And we do get a lot of traffic from that as well. But our, you know, our most important thing that we're trying to achieve is to actually build the audiences ourselves uh, directly with with the users in our industries. To actually, and that's how we're building our news wire subscribers and our follow subscribers are probably mm. the most important way of moving forward for us to actually do that. Mm. Um, so yeah, it is, it's important to, to not only have to have good quality content, but to get it out to people and to bring people back to the websites. Yeah. 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 So. <coughs> You know, obviously, content is very important to you, but you know, if if you had to rate how how content is effective for you mm. in your business, and, and sort of you know zero to ten, and ten is most effective. Mm. Where, where would you put content at the moment for you? for our particular business? Yeah, well, I think you know it's right up there, nine or ten, because it's uh, 
that's that's the thing that we use in order to engage with our audience in order to give us something to on sell to our advertisers you know advertisers want to see that you have an audience um, so that's that's the way we continually engage and grow that audience um, yeah so obviously hugely important for us as a media business and would you say other people in your, in your sort of area of Realize that as well, or, or if you, is that your point of difference? Uh, I think it's one of our points of difference. Maybe after this video, everyone will know about it, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a big focus for us, and we realize it's important. And uh, I think you know, most good media business sh businesses should realize that, that you know, content is very important in order to grow an audience and engage an audience. Um, look, we, look, we have. Um, there's really hundreds of small, medium, and large companies who are advertising with us. Um, companies that you would have heard of, obviously, things that come like up 3M and Microsoft and um, Crown Equipment and just many of these different companies. And um, you know, having said that, we've got a lot of small companies, and that's actually the area of, the, of business that we're more passionate about: smaller companies who are able to sort of have this level playing field by working hard on our website, doing, using, putting up good quality content and actually utilizing all our features which often the bigger companies overlook so we're excited about that opportunity that we give to smaller companies to to put themselves on our site and to generate inquiries and um, because uh, we get many inquiries and, and, and many clicks on our website every day so uh, uh, without actually pointing to specific companies uh, case studies you know that a lot of companies are doing a lot of, mm. a lot of good things on our website and generating a lot of business so uh, we're quite, quite proud of that. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Jeremy. Thank you, Deborah.